Hey guys, so I played the beta for Wanderers Eternals and I'm going to explain like some of the mechanics of how things work and what they revealed to us so far. Alright, so there's three things to talk about. There's PvP, PvE, and minigames. So in PvP, they have three modes. There's the Gold Clash Ranked, which is like 4v4. Gold Smash, which is a free-for-all. And Friendlies, which is like you, you team up with uh, whoever you want to uh, team up with and play against whoever you invite. In PvE, essentially there's chapters, and in the chapters there are dungeons. Um, this is where you unlock characters, increase your some of the stats of your characters, uh, their weapon damage, and so on. Alright, so when you enter a gate for a chapter, you come into this base, essentially, before you enter a dungeon. Uh, you can do a bunch of things like change character, change pet, get artifacts, enhance your weapon, and just unlock your skill tree. You can play as whichever character you have. Beta revealed seven characters. They're essentially fairy tale based champions with each having its unique set of abilities. Uh, you got ranged characters like Oz, Robin, Scarlet. And then there's the melee characters like Alibaba, Adil, and Alice, and Snow. So I'll show some of the gameplay for these guys right now. Up here we have Robin. So he does charged attacks. Charged attacks does a little more damage than a regular attacks. But it takes a while you need to charge it up. His dash applies a target debuff on an enemy, which decreases their defense by 10%. Uh, your Q essentially shoots 9 arrows in front of you, each dealing 90% of attack damage. Your E shoots 2 arrows consecutively dealing damage equal to 65% of attack towards enemies in front. It's a snow. Pretty much like Robin, she also does charged attacks. Her charge actually does damage too if you charge towards them. You have Q which makes a shield, deflects damage. Let me in. Let me in. And then you have E which is just like a large attack. You can see that attack got deflected or just absorbed. This is Alice. Her abilities are she has Whirlpool when she spins and deals damage equal 30% of attack to nearby enemies every 0.2 seconds. And her E is like a smash similar to Snow's. She shrinks while evading and if someone hits her while she's evading, she gains 3% health back. Alibaba basically he attacks Grants some stealth, and then he attacks again, and he comes out of stealth. He is just um, few fast attacks, and each time he collects coins, he gets speed. Hello, I like money. Can kind of finish off enemies before they even land a hit. I'm fast as fuck, boy. We got Scarlet here. So Scarlet just fires bullets. And if she hits an enemy, she gains attack speed. I'm basically a stormtrooper with Scarlet because I'm missing 90% of the shots. Q, she essentially jumps over enemies and does damage. Her E essentially shoots three bullets rapidly four times. Dash essentially is based on the element you have equipped. In this case, leaves behind four bombs. Oz, her basic attacks leave behind spears on enemies, and this ability Q explodes. <laughs> explodes the spears and does collateral damage to nearby enemies. Her E shoots out five spears towards the direction you're facing and also leaves behind a mark. And Adel. Alright, so her Q force install lets her enter force state. Uh, while she's in the state, her attacks become mid-range and faster. She can't move while she's in the state, so you'll have to just dash while you're in the state. Her E just does a few fast attacks in front of her. If she uses it in a force state, she just doesn't explode. Explosion that does more damage. Let's talk about the dungeon itself now. Alright, so when you start off the dungeon, you can select the two paths. You can't see the map before you start, so you have to pick, pick a side, then you'll see the map. 
but let's go with this one. So once you're in the map, if you press M, you could see the path you could take. So you're here and you're essentially trying to get to the boss room. So you just beat up these guys. When you beat them up and collect gold, you gain buffs on the side, depending on your buff level, um, if you reach the level that is. So after you do a full cycle, you can select a buff. And depending on what buffs you select, you can go like towards a certain build. Let's say you want to really do some sort of AOE build where you make all the buffs relevant to Whirlpool. So you just get a bunch of things that are that will help you with Whirlpool and tanky stuff. It depends on how you want to make things. So go with this one. So let's see, I'll reach level two. Um, you know, I can change it up and do the other miscellaneous things. Like upon perfect evasion, you summon a sword that deals area damage at the activated location, 5% of max health. But if you're not confident that uh, in your ability to do a perfect evasion, that this might not be, you know, something you want to get. All right, so each room has its own special thing. There's puzzle rooms where he drops gifts. There's artifact rooms. There's rooms where you get a bunch of gold. There's rooms that drop items that enhance your weapons. There's also rooms where you can temporarily get a weapon skill and get an element to add it to your weapon. Artifacts and the weapon skill rooms are temporary. They will disappear once you defeat the boss of the dungeon. Things like gold, weapon shards, memory fragments, even the gifts are things you get to keep that will eventually help your character improve once you get out the dungeon. There's also rooms where you see explanation mark. Those are quest rooms. All right, let me explain the mini games. There's the dice field. Essentially, you queue up with one more person and you move around the field based on the number you roll. The idea is, you know, within the number of turns both of you have, you have to occupy most of the field or take down the other player's HP to zero. Now this minigame is by far my most favorite, mainly because it's a turn-based game and the all turn-based games are top of the list. This was like a bigger field with like uh, more players in it. it, it would be perfect. But even without that, it's still great as it is. There's the ever-growing bean sprout. This one essentially you just, um, it's like a high score thing. Just keep cutting the tree or the beanstalk thing as much as you can on, uh, without any of the leaves hitting you. And you have that time, see how far you can cut. Let's do it again. Come on, this is the, this is the time. Damn, I got I wasn't paying attention. Five hours later. Ugh. Bro, what the heck? We're going too fast. Damn, I knew it. Okay. Or too slow, in fact. Okay. Doesn't didn't work. Let's do it again. There's the racing one. Essentially, you just get on a mount and race. Right turn ahead. Genius, which is um, basically it's trivia questions related to Wanderers Eternals, and you just say it's true or false, and you have high scores on the side of who got the highest. Snow has level up buff that increases her damage dealt the more HP she has. You know, maybe. So I'll say true. And then you see I got one point there. Um, Alibaba can hide himself from his opponent by using stealth. That's true. If you get one wrong, then like you get pushed out and your score resets to zero. You can use the trade feature to exchange unwanted materials for the ones you need. Yep, that's true. Art Lancer is one of the monsters that appear at the Queen of Hearts castle. I honestly don't know. I'm just going to stay at say true see what happens yep that's not true and my score went back to zero so in the beta phase they kind of made it easily accessible to get these mounts i don't know how easy they'll be like in the official release you do have mounts that let you fly which is pretty cool like this one i can show you the world oh the maze okay in the maze this is where you essentially um and collect gifts you only find three gifts per day it's like a maze where you just um, try to find the gifts or the end end line um, sometimes you can get gifts that are helpful to your pets this is one of the primary places to find those gifts actually messed up not that way on something there you go that's a gift so the pets 
that you acquire either from the shop or from the glitch dungeon can be leveled up in a sense of uh, their friendship level. You can give them stuff, the gifts you just collected, and that will increase their stats. All right, let's talk about PvP. Uh, you know, for some of these matches, I was absolutely destroying people. But unfortunately, I didn't get those recordings. I can't really show those right now. Either way, so the PvP works in a way that basically whichever team, like it's 999, gold first wins the round um you can use some of those gold coins to buy artifacts which is going to make your character strong so you can um, do more damage the buffs work the same way it works in pve which is collect coins and you get buffs um beat up a player they drop their gold the same goes for you if someone beats you up you drop your gold um and yeah so whichever team first to collect uh 9999 gold within time with uh 10 minutes is is the, the one to win all right so the game's pretty fun in my opinion i don't know if it's pay to win but there seems to be some aspects which could be pay to win for example i could imagine you needing to pay for opening more boxes and certain things having low drop rates and they might be meta at the time so you might want them in that case you might be needing to pay to be ahead but the mini games for example those don't seem to have any pay to win aspects and they're pretty fun so it's pretty cool and it seems like there's lots to do and it visually looks nice which is always a nice thing but yeah overall it's fun some of my recommendations would be to allow you to unblock camera when moving similar to league like you're able to unlock camera so you can see throughout the map um maybe if there was some sort of breeding system for pets that'll be cool or if they make it harder to get certain pets um yeah beside that it's pretty cool